Hello guys, now in this video, let's discuss about the topic of uterine fibroids. Guys, what I actually mean by fibroids? See, these fibroids are the malignant or benign guys. See, uterine fibroids are benign solid tumors in female. Okay, they are most common benign solid tumors in the female. See, these uterine fibroids are also known as Leo myomas okay see these uterine fibroids which are benign solid tumors are also known as leomyomas see what exactly they are are the tumors of perimetrium endometrium or myometrium they are the tumors of myometrium okay and they are also the most common pelvic tumors in female and they are estrogen and progesterone dependent tumor means their development and their growth depends on estrogen and progesterone okay now a very very important point which you should never ever miss because they will ask you in the exams uterine fibroids are most commonly seen in which age group women cervical cancer is most commonly seen in which age group women endometriosis most commonly affects which age group women so you should know that uterine fibroids are seen in women of 35 to 45 years of age okay and nulliparous women and obese females are at the risk of developing this uterine fibroids guys here I used to remember it like this okay just make it simple usually uterus is a place where baby should grow for example a nulliparous woman okay nulliparous means she have not conceived, she didn't give birth to any child, for example. Okay, she is almost 40 years of age and she still is an early parous woman. Now, uterus is a place where there should be a baby. Now, in this woman, her uterus is not bearing a child. So, uterus think like this. What is the function of me? There is no child coming. Okay, let me bear something other than the child. Okay, as this woman is not indulging herself in any sexual activity and there is no baby so the uterus now it is having its own baby it's nothing but the fibroid okay i'm just a little bit more poetical but this is not actually the truth but see nulliparous women who do not have any child are at a more risk of developing the uterine fibroids okay and even the females obese females are also at the highest risk right? because obese females means lot of adipose tissue lot of adipose tissue means lot of peripheral aromatization of the androgens too much amount of estrogen this too much amount of estrogen hyper estrogenic state can lead to uterine fibroids okay and this is the one place where smoking can be beneficial okay here smoking and increase the parity nulli parity is a risk factor but multi parity is a protective factor okay smoking is a protective factor even constipation smoking is a protective factor for Crohn's disease smoking is a protective factor ulcerative colitis okay now their smoking is protective now the first degree relatives you know blood relation okay direct relation mother daughter okay sister sister so first degree relatives have 2.5 times risk of developing this uterine fibroids okay now chromosomal abnormalities okay uh, 2.5 times risk of getting a pregnancy not getting a pregnancy getting a fibroids okay now chromosomal abnormalities like translocation 1214 and even deletion of chromosome number 7 they are associated with the development of uterine fibroids now after saying this let's see how many different types of fibroids are there guys remember mainly fibroids are classified into three types what are they main important is the intramural fibroid means a fibroid which is localized to the wall and growing inside the wall of the uterus means it's just localized and growing inside the wall of the uterus the other type of fibroids are growing into the uterus into the uterine cavity those are known as submucosal fibroids and the other variant is growing out of the uterus, outside the uterus. They are known as sub fibroids. See, if these fibroids, if they are having a stalk, if they are having a stalk, 
okay they are known as a pedunculated uh, fibroids okay after seeing this let's go in detail about the uterine fibroids here are some important points regarding uterine fibroids see most common variety of the uterine fibroid is is it submucous subserosal intramural guys remember most common variety of the fibroid is intra mural okay intramural fibroids and also remember in the beginning all fibroids should begin as intramural fibroids okay intra mural fibroids all fibroids should begin take their life as intramural fibroids and from there either they can expand inward or they can expand outward now fibroid with the maximum symptoms who is the worst fibroid is it intramural or submucosal or subserosal guys remember i should remember it like this see the uterine cavity uterine cavity is the most protective place that is the place where the baby should nurture okay that is a, a very very safety place if we, in this safety place if something is growing no one can touch it okay there is too much amount of protection see what is this fibroid guys goes into the uterine cavity see it's a sub mucosal fibroid grows into the uterine cavity and it's having lot of protection just like as a baby so it will show its bad face so remember fibroid with the maximum symptoms are sub mucosal fibroid okay as it is growing inside the uterine cavity it won't let the baby to grow over there so it will cause infertility so you should know guys remember fibroids which cause maximum abortions which is not letting the baby to grow that is a again sub mucosal fibroid okay and a torsion okay let's let's discuss here most common fibroid to undergo malignant transformation guys i have already said who is the worst fibroid is a sub mucosal fibroid so it can turn into cancer again sub a mucosal fibroid can cause cancer or can change into malignancy torsion is most commonly seen in guys remember torsion means you know it right torsion means just rounding it up now guys for torsion you need to have a stalk like structure so that fibroid is uh, like you know rounding uh, based on the uh, stalk axis so torsion is most commonly seen in those fibroids which have a peduncle so pedunculated pedunculated sub serous means outside pedunculated subserous fibroids okay pedunculated subserous fibroids will have the risk of torsion and inversion is seen in what does it mean by inversion guys uterine inversion guys remember uterus is something like this but if you keep a big mass on to the top of the uterus you just kept a big mass on to the top of the uterus what happens the uterus will invert so the fibroid which is present in this region which is known as a fundal fibroids okay fundal fibroid fundal fibroids are associated with inversion now wandering or parasitic fibroid what does it mean by wandering or parasitic fibroid guys wandering or parasitic fibroid means so this fibroid is moving okay here and there here and there it's moving it can go to the other places also so what is that fibroid guys it is also a sub a serosal fibroid okay sub serosal fibroid which is present outside it can, it can go here and there okay fibroid associated with the urinary symptoms which fibroid will cause symptoms like urgency increased frequency and urinary retention it is cervical fibroid guys here you need to know some important points cervical fibroids are classified into anterior a cervical fibroids okay let me write it here anterior cervical fibroids and a posterior cervical fibroids guys remember anterior cervical fibroids are associated 
with urinary urgencies are increased frequency okay but posterior cervical fibroids are associated with urinary retention okay they are associated with urinary retention so at the end of the day one important point you have to keep in mind is which fibroids are associated with the urinary symptoms it is the cervical fibroids anterior cervical fibroids causes increased frequency and posterior cervical fibroids are associated with urinary retention okay now what's the most common presentation if, if, if a female is having uh, these fibroids most of the time she will be a symptomatic okay most of the time she will be asymptomatic but the most common symptom of the fibroid is if she is having a symptom then the most common symptom is menorrhagia okay so menorrhagia means too much amount of blood okay too much amount of blood loss during periods okay so most common symptom of a fibroid is a menorrhagia so this is a one of the main reason why the females with fibroid comes to the clinic they will be saying you know i have too much amount of blood loss sir. okay so important point menorrhagia is the one which brings the female to the clinic now secondary changes seen in the fibroid guys remember these fibroids will undergo a certain changes what are they see as they are the growing uh, tumors they won't receive proper nutrition okay why because they are not the malignant cells malignant cells produce factors which can which will bring the blood vessels towards them angiogenesis so that they will grow but these are not malignant they are not going to produce angiogenesis factors so these fibroids won't receive the proper nutrition so that they will undergo atrophy and even degeneration there are different different types of fibroids so different different types of fibroid in different different types of mindsets for example so they will undergo degeneration in different different ways different different people commit suicide in different different ways just like that even the fibroids undergo degeneration in different different ways some important uh, degenerative methods are red degeneration hyaline degeneration fatty degeneration myxomatous degeneration and cystic degeneration out of all important point for the exam is most common degeneration is a hyaline degeneration and which type of degeneration is going to happen during pregnancy it is red degeneration red degeneration is most commonly seen in pregnancy especially in the second trimester and cystic degeneration is seen in post menopausal women and even the intramural fibroids which are the most common type of fibroids will undergo cystic degeneration okay this point very very important okay so now guys important point here is during pregnancy there is red degeneration means on one side there is a pregnant woman okay baby is growing another side in the same woman in her uterus a fibroid is undergoing degeneration so this is very very important case what should i have to do a fibroid is undergoing degeneration so that now she will be having too much amount of pain malice nausea vomitings all these things are there should we have to terminate the pregnancy now let's see some important points about red degeneration okay now guys please concentrate red degeneration is occurring in the pregnancy and it's a aseptic condition it's not at all microbiological mediated there is no microbiota over here there are no microorganisms okay it's a aseptic infarction okay why the fibroid is undergoing necrosis because of thrombosis of the blood vessels which are supplying the fibroid see histologically there is an evidence of a thrombosis there is a thrombosis in the blood vessels which are supplying the fibroid so whenever there is a thrombosis in the blood vessels the amount of blood reaching the fibroid is going to be decreased so what happens the fibroid will undergo necrosis so if you see this fibroid on histological studies you will see the fibroid will become necrotic and stains salmon pink with the fishy odor so how the female is going to present the female will have sudden abdominal pain she will be having vomiting malice fever leukocytosis and raised esr an important point is should we have to terminate the pregnancy now in the second trimester 
no need see there is no need of termination of pregnancy no need of antibiotics and no need of performing myomectomy no need to do anything you just do conservative management with painkillers and anti fever drugs antipyretics and just painkiller analgesics why because the degeneration will continue and the patient will come to normal state okay after 2 to 3 days everything will be resolved no need of termination of pregnancy just to do conservative management that's sufficient okay now after this let's see some important symptoms of the fibroid i have already said most of the fibroids are asymptomatic if there are symptoms that is too much bleeding during periods menorrhagia or she can have metrorrhagia metrorrhagia means irregular bleeding or she can have dysmenorrhea painful menses okay so these are the most common symptoms is menorrhagia followed by the other two now infertility guys i have said that the submucosal fibroids are the ones which are mainly responsible for the infertility why why because how they are going to cause the infertility how means they interferes with the implantation of the fertilized ovum okay they won't let the implantation to occur properly and also they will hinder the ascent of the sperms reaching the ova okay as there is a fibroid it can be a barrier for the sperm to go towards the fallopian tube okay now pain guys remember usually fibroids do not cause any pain but if there is a pain it indicates that there might be a malignant change or there might be a torsion or degeneration happening we already seen okay so during degeneration there will be acute abdominal pain nausea vomiting malaise okay so pain will be seen during degeneration torsion malignant change or associated endometriosis in the female now anemia see fibroids are the ones associated with menorrhagia so that there is too much amount of bleeding and even irregular bleeding is also seen so most of the females will have anemia but important point is there is an exception which fibroids are associated with polycythemia it's a broad ligament fibroids broad ligament fibroids causes polycythemia rather than anemia okay now see hypoglycemia and hypokalemia are seen see these are usually seen with any tumor why because tumors will demand lots and lots of uh, glucose for their development so even these fibroids are taking up all the blood glucose so that there will be hypoglycemia and there is too much amount of cell division see cells are the backs of potassium so all the potassium is utilized for the cell division so there is hypokalemia okay now after this let's see the management of the fibroids guys please concentrate there are three management methods what are they there is a fibroid cut it throw it out myomectomy second one is hysterectomy cut the uterus throw it out third one is embolization procedure okay now let's see one by one myomectomy what does it mean by myomectomy guys cutting the tumor throwing it out simple okay now you can do it by laparoscopic method abdominal method and hysteroscopic method we are mainly preferring laparoscopic these days so what are the indications of myomectomy usually if there is a fibroid it's asymptomatic but when you have to go for the myomectomy whenever it's creating too much amount of problems like menorrhagia if there is too much amount of uncontrollable menorrhagia go for the myomectomy or symptoms like urinary retention that is posterior cervical fibroids will cause urinary retention so in those conditions you can go with the myomectomy and uh, unexplained infertility the female is having the fibroid totally asymptomatic but she is trying to conceive it's not happening so again you can choose myomectomy this rapidly growing fibroid may turn into malignancy so better remove it so these are the indications of myomectomy but also you should know what are the contraindications of myomectomy when myomectomy should not be done if it is a broad ligament fibroid don't do myomectomy why why because in the broad ligament you are having lots of important blood vessels for example uterine artery is there ureter is there so as there is presence of lot of vessels you are not supposed to do broad ligament fibroids myomectomy so then what you can do you can do hysterectomy okay if there is a broad ligament fibroid you can go with the hysterectomy not 
myomectomy. Multiple tiny fibroids in the uterine wall. If there's too much scattering of the small, small, small fibroids in the uterine wall, you cannot remove one by one, one by one, one by one. So you can go for the hysterectomy in this case. And pelvic or endometrial TB are infected fibroids. See, if there is some infection going on in the uterus. Like a pelvic endometrial tuberculosis or infected fibroid, don't go for the surgery. If there is some infection going on, don't go for the surgery. First treat the surgery, then go for the surgery. Okay, so active pelvic or endometrial TB or infected fibroid, no myomectomy. First treat it with antibiotics. Okay, now when you have to do the hysterectomy, means complete removal of the uterus. See, when you'll be doing it, whenever the female don't require her uterus, when she'll be not, uh, won't require her uterus. Whenever she is getting old, whenever her family is completed. So, a patient above 40 years of age or multiparous women who don't require this uterus, you can do hysterectomy. And fibroids associated with malignancy. If there is a malignant transformation happening in the fibroids, then won't do myomectomy. Take out the uterus. Why to take the risk? Okay. Now, uncontrolled hemorrhage during myomectomy. You plan for the myomectomy. Okay, you are an intern, you are not an expertise. So while performing myomectomy, if there is a too much amount of uncontrollable bleeding, then you can opt for the, you can do the uh, hysterectomy that is life saving for the patient. Okay, now, last and final, embolotherapy. Guys, this embolotherapy, what actually we are doing here? We are actually embolizing the uterine artery okay uterine artery embolization is done with polyvinyl alcohol or gel foam okay with polyvinyl alcohol or gel foam we are embolizing the uterine artery so what happens there is a decrease of blood flow to the uterine fibroid so whenever there is a decrease of blood flow there is a decrease in nutrition there is decrease oxygen so what happens the fibroid will shrink Okay, so it's an interventional radiologist. Okay, it is done by the interventional radiologist where the uterine blood is, uh, uterine blood flow is obstructed producing ischemia necrosis so that there is almost 40 to 50 percent shrinkage in the size of the fibroid. So how this is going to be helpful? If there is a decrease in the size of the fibroid that can treat the symptoms because of this fibroid. See, almost 90% of the females who are suffering with menorrhagia due to this fibroid, the menorrhagia is controlled. Because of this embolization, uh, there is a 40 to 50% shrinkage in the size of the fibroid. Okay, see, even this embolotherapy uh, can be used preoperatively to decrease the size of the fibroid and to decrease the blood loss during uh, surgery. Why? Because, see, you are planning to do the myomectomy. See, even before myomectomy, you can do embolotherapy so that the fibroid size is decreased, its vascularity is decreased. So, when you are performing myomectomy, there will be minimal blood loss. So, that will be a uh, very much beneficial. Okay guys, that's uh, all about the uterine fibroids. I hope the lecture is helpful. Thank you.